Today we're going to present programming for tweens for summer reading. We have some uh, program ideas, some craft ideas, some passive ideas for those in between, those teen wannabes that are in grades 3, 4, and 5, about 11 years, between 8 and 11 years old. So we're going to start with a program having to do with nocturnal animals. Um, similar to some things that they brought up with the children's programming, partner with your Parks and Rec, partner with an amateur astronomy club. The uh, amateur astronomers, oh, this is for, I'm sorry, museums is what I was thinking of for this one. Um, there are museums, I know the San Diego Natural History Museum loans out taxidermied animals. Um, and you can take them into your library for a certain length of time and have them on display and put out all of your uh, reference materials about these, these animals and talk about them, have the kids draw them. We um, let them be the researchers and they can do a matching game, kind of a passive program where you have pictures of nocturnal animals, maybe throw in a diurnal animal, animal or blah, diurnal animal or two and have them match what goes with what. Um, on the website there is a handout that has many more animals than this that you can use for that activity. And again, make sure that you have reference materials close by. Another program and one of my favorites would be a, have a campfire. You can almost do the whole summer with just campfire ideas. You would um, set up tents, again, like the one I have in the back. You can borrow them from your staff or your, or your um, colleagues or your, your customers. Um, find them, partner with a sporting goods store and see if they have any old stock that they might be getting rid of that you can borrow. Um, make s'mores. I believe there are some cooking at the moment so that at, sta at, um, at the break we might be able to try one. Uh, with a box oven, and you'll see the box oven in the back made out of a Ziploc box that I got at Costco, um, and some foil and an electric light. You just plug in the light, you put in the marshmallows, and they just cook. Uh, hopefully they're not burning at the moment. <laughs> um, also, you can build a campfire out of um, wood, real wood, but tissue paper for the, for the flames, orange, yellow, and red. You can see that back there as well. Um, I have a little light under the under it that makes it look like it's burning. You can learn campfire songs. Lots of things online. There are some books in your library. There is a chair set up over there and on it is a campfire book um, that has a lot of ideas in it as well. You can create camping snacks that you don't have to cook. Make sandwiches, I don't know, celery with peanut butter, lots and lots of gorp recipes which I have uh, referred you to on the handouts. Um, and then there is also a pizza oven option, making a pizza box oven option that you would need to have uh, do it during the daytime because you need the sun for the heat. But you can use that as well. So during the camp out, you could also have the tweens decorate pillows. They love decorating t-shirts and having their own say on things, so give them a pillowcase, some fabric markers and paint and see what they create. Another thing that I was, I was going to show you um, a, just a brief YouTube video, but you can access it from the website. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen this in motion. There are lights. Actually, there's a glove over there. This is a little bit different. Um, I'll, she'll figure it out. <laughs> um, they do kind of a light show in the dark, and it's something that tweens do in their Get, when they get together with each other. Um, that's how I saw it in the first place. And it is basically very inexpensive. That glove was like $7 for a pair. And you can do it in the library. Um, buy a few pair, have them create a show of their own. The tweens will love it. Um, and then when you shake it around, there's a, a whole different bunch of settings on the, this particular set of gloves that I bought. But. Um, they can create a show and put it on for the other tweens. So keeping with the illumination theme, you can make a lava lamp that's non-electrical. 
you use water, oil, Alka-Seltzer tablets, and you put it into a bottle, and it all globs together, and you put some food coloring in, and you illuminate it with a flashlight. And there's a couple different options for that as well. Or you can make glow-in-the-dark goo. It's similar to other goos that you've seen with the borax and the glue, and you just throw in some um, glow-in-the-dark paint. I have a stuff up here, so if anyone wants to test it out, you can do that. You can also make candles. There's lots of different kinds. This one is a candle that has a tapered candle that you put into a container. You put ice around it, and you pour wax over it. And so the ice forms pockets, and it melts away, and it leaves like a very art deco-y kind of shape. You might want to present a Starry Night program. Um, develop a partnership with an astronomy club. The amateur astronomers love sharing what they know with anybody who will listen to them. They, <laughs> they bring their telescopes with them. They will let kids touch them and look at things. Even the daytime sky, I don't know if you've noticed uh, this last week, the moon has been up in the sky during the daytime. And so you can explore, maybe have two programs. Have one where it's in the daytime, have one where it's an after hours program. Um, and have them compare what the daytime sky looks like as compared to the night, what they can see in the daytime versus what they can see at night. So one way to further extend this experience is to make constellation string arts. And I have two examples here. And um, it just gives the kids something more tangible to hold on to and learn about the constellations. And you basically just poke holes whoops, and, um, in the shape of the, where the stars would be. And then they lace the um, thread through to make the constellation shapes. Or they could make dream boxes and journals so they can write down their dreams or keep little trinkets in here that are special to them so that um, they just have something special and that they've made where they can keep their thoughts and specialness. <laughs> <laughs> and each and every one of them is special. Um, another passive activity that you can create is um, a constellation match game where you have collected pictures of constellations and then their names in a different order and put in some that are made up and see if they can match those using the reference materials you have in your library. What you can do is also collect them in a jar at the, and you'll have a, a right, for both of these activities, have a strip at the bottom that says my name and my contact information. And at the end of the summer, for everyone who's done it, you can hit raffle, you can pull one out and give away prizes for that. Another passive activity would be to have a container of glow stars where the kids can guess how many glow stars there are. This could be to promote an upcoming astronomy program or as part of the astronomy program you can have it sitting out or just for fun and then whoever gets the closest gets the stars. And one of my favorite things to do is, is science as they mentioned in my bio. Um, and I had the opportunity to go to a training that was put on by NASA for those of us who wanted to add science and, and especially moon exploration into our libraries and bring it into the library in some way. And one of the activities that we did was um, creating a demonstration of how the impact craters were created on the moon. And this involves um, getting a tin pan, a, an aluminum pan, baking pan, putting corn, corn, um, corn meal, corn meal on the bottom, flour in the middle, and cocoa on the top. So those are kind of the layers of the moon. And then getting round or not necessarily round objects and throwing them at the surface. <laughs> I was going to do it today, but it really does get messy. Um, the, but the staff is not going to actually care about the mess because it, the library smells like chocolate for days. I mean. <laughs> so it is a great opportunity to talk about moon exploration. NASA has an amazing website that we can all use. It has lesson plans. It has ideas for programs. 
um, to bring that kind of a thing, especially this summer, into our libraries. A lot of space ideas in there, not just the moon. Um, they go everywhere. Well, there are so many possibilities to think of again for this summer's, I, this year's theme, limited only by your imagination and that, that again of your colleagues. And we invite you to contact us with any questions or ideas that you might want to share. All of the handouts, everything that we've talked about is on the website. I did bring some samples of the um, handouts for you to look at if you wanted to see them at the break. Well, thank you so much.